No, he won't. No, he doesn't. March 12th, 2017. Undead from Cleveland. You're listening to Video Game News Radio with your host, Kevin Baird. Brian Baird. And Don Anderson. Larry will probably join us soon. I don't know if he forgot to set his clock. thought Brian might have. He's usually here earlier, but... No, I was bullshit with my girlfriend, so... Was you having, good... Were you having a big fight? About... No, I said bullshit. I didn't say pulling each other's fucking hair out took the screaming. big piece of chicken? Chicken. <laughs> I get the big piece of chicken. Who There's took no... my big piece of chicken? There's nobody getting chicken in this house. <laughs> Why? You guys nobody's don't... nobody's you guys... cooking. You guys don't like... Come on, you get KFC once in a while? Or yeah, but I get heartburn. That's the fucking... I'm getting to that... It's to that point where I'm starting to think about dying. Might be preferable. <laughs> To not being able to eat yummy food when people bring it around. <sighs> it's like we got waste. We have wasteland coming up. People are like, you're going to go, right? I'm like, I don't know. I don't even have a room. We don't have a ticket. Nothing. Because every time I, I, last I have three, no desire to go. Yeah, the last three, four times I've looked at getting a room. It's like I every time I went, like, no, there's no rooms, and I know there's fucking because Kevin would go right on there and get a fucking room. And I've tried every which way people tell me to do it. Like, no, no there's no fucking rooms. I'm just like. God damn it. And then, like, I go, and, like, Friday, I'll have a ball. I have a lot of fun Friday. But then I get, like, this phobia kicks in. So, like, by Saturday, I'm just, like, the last couple of times, I'm just sitting in the back with my back as well, looking at everybody, like, like I'm just, like, get out. Get out of my room. Oh, Why are you in my room? Here comes the vomit scene. It's not I'm good. I'm so not watching that shit. I'm looking at anything else but, because <laughs> otherwise, I'm like, <laughs> Blork. Uh, we've oversold it. It won't be that bad. But, oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Oh. So, yeah, I'm like, I want to go, but I think I might just go on Friday. And I don't know how long I'm going to be there for. Like, I want to be able to spend the night, but so I don't want to drive. I just want to go when Blackie's there because that's when all the incidents happen. All well, the crazy shit. Yeah, yeah. No, it literally happened in his room for once, man. It like, my fucking room. I'm like, I was like, Brian, you look sick. I'm like, yeah, it's, I remember there's just too many people. You know, there's just in one room, there's too many people. I'm really not used to it anymore. It's been like what? Driving a truck for 25 fucking years. 25 years. Geez. You know, and I'm, I'm used to be by myself. You know, and all of a sudden now there's like more people around me. I'm like, kind of like, eh, I don't know what the fuck's going on. And yeah, and that, nobody left. They all see like I'm illing from too many people in the room. Like, I'm just nice to be around people. Oh, yeah. Well, anyway, people just party and find the manager's like, shut the fuck up, get out. <laughs> I'm like, thank God. And I was like, everybody, please leave. I feel ill. I need to lay down and twitch. <laughs> it's fucking sick. All right. Well, let's get to our top 20 titles of the week nobody drinking cares. game. Uh, basically, if. Uh, we list off something that's not a game, such as a hardware item or a uh, piece of plastic. Xbox Live card, yeah. Then uh, you have to drink. This week I'm drinking uh, Diet Sunkiss. Ugh. Orange soda. Ugh. But it's got, the, it's got the caffeine. Uh, yeah, okay. You got the, uh, got the caffeine going. I got the caffeine. <laughs> yeah, caffeine. <laughs> I'm not watching it, dude. Fuck you. Uh, so, it's so gross. There it is. Oh, no. Way to, way to start the show. Please, God. It's just the I just remember all of us were running to the bathroom to horf it up, and Oz is sitting there laughing. He was laughing so hard, it was like his jaw had fucking dislocated itself. He's just like, ah, No, I'm fine, man. I think that's that stone. Edited or something. It wasn't as long as usual. Um, number 20, PlayStation Plus one month membership card. Everybody drink. Drink. Don, you got a water? Yep. I have mango flavored. Uh, with your water. I have mango flavored iced tea from Lipton because I like mango. Sounds but I have to good. pee like a fucking racehorse. Number nineteen, the Nintendo Switch carrying case screen protector. No, that's screen protector. That's a drink. Yeah. That's fucking a piece of shit. It just keeps working. Apparently, that's a problem too with the screens getting scratched or something on this thing. Uh, number 18, the Nintendo Switch Gray Joy-Con. What? That's the, what they call the controller. It's called the Joy-Con. All right. I know. <laughs> Whoever first came up with that name, Joystick, that had to have been a guy in Japan. Probably somebody that didn't have to deal with a bunch of, like, homophobic Japanese. fucking dudes yeah. hanging around. Take your pants off, Joystick. Huh? <laughs> I did send them the email, too. <laughs> Just in case there was any... Any doubts? Any concern about... Larry Max Health. <laughs> Is he dead in a corner, finally? Hope not. He's fine. Number 17, Mass Effect 
Andromeda for the Xbox One. Brian, you getting that? No. But I thought you're... Uh... No, she hates them now. Oh, because of the ending? Yeah, I just, I've like, I, if, to be honest, dude, anytime I've ever really played uh, Mass Effect, I've always found PC, like, way easier. Because for some odd reason, playing, like, on console and trying to aim and shoot, I just suck at it. That's, like, the one game where, like, just trying to aim and shoot, I'm the worst. Even though, like, the PC version is just slightly harder, I don't mind. Hmm. I'm a pussy, it's all it is. I'll get it. <laughs> I'll get it myself. I probably won't get figured that. I got so many games I haven't played. I've been playing the Batman Telltale game. Are you like it? It's just. I heard it's not bad. I mean, well, I've watched other people briefly. It's just Telltale. No, that's okay. It's I, I like Telltale games. It's just that it's the same Batman story again. Right. And Anderson knows what I'm talking about. I mean, I didn't see his parents get killed in the beginning, but like Harvey Dent's running for office. He's he's just meeting Catwoman for the first time. You know, it's kind of like, I've been here. I've been here many times, folks. Many times. Yeah. I don't need to go through it again. Get me something new, Batman. I don't know who you're introducing yourself to, but it's it's silly. Silly. At least Robin's not in it with his tight underwear on. The boy wonder. Oh, I wonder. Number 16, PlayStation 4 Slim Edition, the Uncharted 4. That's uh, not a game. Drink. Robin sucks the root. Number 15, Final Fantasy VII. The Zodiac Age. Limited edition Steel Lord edition. Big fucking medallion with a Zodiac symbol. Hi. Big open flowery shirt. I did not pre-order Final Fantasy VII. Uh, I hear it's... Or 12, I mean. I hear it's going to be good, but... Meh. Number 14, $60 PlayStation Store gift card. I don't have the time to put in for an RPG like that. Just That's what it is. You just you have to have no life. There was a time when I was a kid. I'd come home from school and I'd have nothing to do for, you know, most of the years between 18 and 21. There's nothing to do at that There's point. There's nothing to do. Like, you can go see a movie. Or you can go over somebody's house. Or that was back home. then, Doug. Now I'm sure it's like a ton of movie. Well, yeah, because there was no internet and stuff. So, yeah. But, I mean, basically all you could do is play video games. Now... Do you say there's no internet and, like, today it's like people just start imagining, like, log cabins? I don't blame them either. It's like, Jesus Christ, I can't believe it. The fuck do we do with ourselves? And, you know, the thing that they'd be like, no, back then it was so much better. People weren't, like, on their phones all the time. Like, you know what I don't hear today people saying is I'm bored. Boy, did you hear the fuck out of that back then. But today, uh-huh. people say they're bored. You, you just look at them like, what? You just had to, broke? You had to assume stuff back then. Like, you know, if somebody was like, well, why do elephants like peanuts? You'd just be thinking in your head, I guess because they like peanuts. I don't know. Yeah, yeah. You had to, like, no- come up, you had to look it up, <laughs> which nobody did. <laughs> There's no way to, you know, you go to a library and look that shit up? No. Yeah, I nobody's mean, going to the fucking library. Just, it was like, or you got to ask somebody that you trust and hope they're telling you the truth. You know? Nobody did. It's just, it's been made up stories. There'd be lots of made up stories. They were kind of Those good. urban legends would get spread around and shit and you'd believe them and stuff. Yeah, everybody would tell day, you the same thing. Modern day kind of took the fun out of everything. It's like now we know the answers. It's like, nah. yeah. Like, is there a god? No, I don't see him. Do you see him? What well, guess there is a god? Number fourteen, six dollars PlayStation Store gift card. Number thirteen, Tom Clancy's Ghost Recon Wildlands. Number twelve, Xbox Live twelve month gift card. Drink. Number eleven, Mass Effect Andromeda for the PlayStation Four. Number ten, fifty dollars PlayStation Store gift card. Drink. Number nine, Horizon Zero Dawn for the PlayStation 4. You hear good things about that. Number eight, the Nintendo Amiibo Zelda Breath of the Wild. Um, drink. Number seven, Mario Kart 8, because that's like an action figure, but it doesn't tell me which one it is, but it's like the girl with the blonde hair. Mm-hmm. Which might be Zelda, actually. That is Zelda. Number seven, Mario Kart 8. Deluxe. Number six, The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild for the Wii U. God bless you. Number five, Nintendo Amiibo Link Rider Breath of the Wild. That's Drink. Number four, Nintendo Amiibo Link Archer. 
That's a drink. Number three, Nintendo Amiibo Guardian Breath Wild. Drink. Guardian Breath. <laughs> That's what it says. <laughs> Ugh, it's like Dragon Breath. Big mouth. It just breathes on through the like, fuck. Number two, The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild for the Nintendo Switch. And number one, the $10 PlayStation Store gift card. So that was our Amazon bestsellers of the week. <laughs> Sounds exciting. Yeah. No, I lied. I was lying. It's <laughs> cracking me up with these sound effects in the background. Um, games coming out this week. On Monday. For multi-platform, we've got Death Squared, Star Trek like Bridge bunch Crew. Of, bunch of heavy metal and math or something? I mean. Star, Star Trek Bridge Crew. That's probably <laughs> one. You probably just get told what to do, and then Spock pinches you on the, on the shoulder. Oh. Pass out. Or you're like Uhura, and you just hear static most of the time. I can't get through, Captain. Yeah, or, or you, you, when the, like, the ship goes one way, you go the other. Yeah. <laughs> she was never good at that shit. <laughs> it's like, no, go left. Left! Oh, fucking chick. What are we going to do? Nothing. She's fucking the producer. <sighs> so funny. And sticks, shards of darkness. Tuesday, nothing. Wednesday for the PlayStation 4, we have, just drink, Senran Kagura Peach Beach Splash. For PC, right. Train Sim World, CX, CSX Heavy Hall. Wow, I don't know what to think about that. That's just weird. And for PlayStation Vita, you know, colon, it says Y-U-N-O. You know... You know, Kono, yo, no hate, decoy, oh, oh, just stop it, ulao, shuju, uh -huh. shujo, mm -hmm. that's about right. Favorite game, love it. <laughs> Sounds about right. And then Friday for PlayStation Vita, we have Monster Hunter Double Cross. You know Kono Yo no Hate Decoy O Yuto Shoujo is a remake of the 1996 sci-fi visual novel being developed by 5PB. And there's some little blonde anime character. Mm -hmm. Scream, screaming. I wonder why. Okay. Brian, why don't you tell us how your week went? Well, I, uh... Got to uh, go on my new route. For those who keep up with my living, paper truck driving this. Oh God, no! Um, and my first day, I, I work Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and that's it. Which means I'm not making nearly as much money, but I'm home more. And I got to be honest, being home more is actually stranger for me than actually being on these weird routes. Um, my first Tuesday, I go to Southern Ohio, as in Marietta, in that area. Um, some, uh, some of the roads, I don't know why they were built the way they were built. But um, clearly, they were built by people from Ohio. And if you've never been here, the first thing you'll latch on to is that people here are cruel for no real reason because they just like fucking with other people. And the roads are built the same way, you know, the southern part of Ohio. Like where we live, they have to kind of keep them straight because otherwise people might just riot. But um, or you might I, have, riot. I have like a lot more backing up in tight spaces as if, in other words, if I get it wrong, I'll probably get fired because I'll smash something valuable. Like there's one alley I have to bank in off of a main road. I'm sorry, there's a bank. And there's like two signs on either side of the alley at the back end too. And then there's like a, I don't know what the hell that thing is for above me, but I guess it's one of those old um, pneumatic tubes or something. I'm not quite certain, but you have to see it to believe it. It's just, I'm not going to get out of the truck and record it. Just look what I got to back into. It's just, it's just really more complicated than I want it to be. And, you know, a lot, in other words, a lot of backing into alleys. And of course, when I used to deliver these stores way back in the day, we had 45 foot trailers. Now we got everything from 48 to 53 footers, and it should be interesting. And then uh, Wednesday, I've only got two stores um, up in Michigan, which uh, that's not bad. You know, I'm, I'm pretty much in and out and back and, you know, back home. I get home every night, which is kind of nice. But the last one's kind of tricky because I go uh, outside of Flint, and then my last stores are by Battle Creek, Michigan. 
and the one I've got to back in off a very busy alley. And they're, there's one of those alleys, like, I'm basically backing up about maybe 10 feet to their back door, and that's it. And the rest of the truck and trailer stick out in the road. And I asked them, like, I'm not going to get a ticket. They're like, no, nah, we've never had a problem. But there's always a first time. Like, great. That's, that's just great. <laughs> yeah. That's what I want to hear, because it'll be me. But fuck it, you know. Just like, all right, fine. So um, I have to do a lot more hand unloading, because a couple of these stores are they're primitive. They don't have forklifts or nothing. So I'm like, well, I'll actually be in a lot better shape by summer, or I'll be dead. From a fucking heart attack, one of the two. Hopefully, I'm going to go for the uh, better shape, but we both, we all know me. Come on, who's exercising? Um, so, yeah, basically, you know, I get home, I'm playing Neverwinter online still because there's the high level stuff, and I'm enjoying playing that when I, you know, there's, there's days I'm like, why do I play this? This is dumb. I should go outside, and I go outside, it's like 20 degrees. I'm like, nope, not going outside, it's dumb. <laughs> <laughs> it's fucking stupid, fucking cold. Well, it's supposed to be really stupid this <laughs> week. Yeah, they're like, and there's going to be snowstorms, and I'm like, uh huh. This is coming from the Weather Channel, right? Okay, I don't believe you. But it's all right because I go south or I go west and then north as opposed to where I used to go. Now, you watch the weather's going to change. The weather's going to change now. It'll be southern Ohio and northern Michigan or middle, middle of Michigan, and they're, they're going to get bombed now. As in New York, Pennsylvania, we don't understand. We get no snow. It's all in Michigan. Yeah, because I'm not fucking there anymore. Um, watch a couple of movies. They just released. They had Return of the Living Dead 2 on iTunes forever, but they didn't have the first one, and then they just released the first one. I was like, yay! So I grabbed that up. Um, a friend of mine told me... that on VHS or something? Who in the fuck is breaking out of VHS, man? <laughs> Good lord. The only you? time that ever happens, if I'm home alone, I'm going to watch really old porn that I only have on a VHS, which is the proper way to watch porn, I might add. Especially for the time period recorded, because modern porn is just... It was spitting. It's just, uh, God... Uh your nose um what the fuck else? Oh my God. I, watch, I watched i watched i was starting to watch that tv show the magicians but i just really didn't it didn't grab me but i started watching the what short the sort of shannara or whatever the fuck that was that series but i think it's called the shannara series i don't know it's on netflix it's actually a lot better than i thought it was gonna be um, I because I know people that read that series like you should read. I'm like, dude, that's a commitment, man. That's got like 20 books, you know. And uh, who's going to keep up with all that shit? You know, it immediately throws you in one of those things with like 20 different characters, and it's like somewhere in our future it takes place where there's elves. And I'm like, all right, you know, it's fantasy. Fuck it, I'm not here to fucking count the stones. You know, I'm just here to figure out like what the fiction is, not worry about like how realistic it is and shit. So elves in the future, why not? You know, and I'm like. I'm like looking at like, one actress gets off this bed to go greet this fellow elf. It's a guy, and I'm looking at her. I'm like, on she, she looks like sixty fucking pounds. <laughs> somewhere, somewhere. I'm trying to think of myself like when I was youthful and I would see like chicks on TV, and you know, I would think they were hot. And I'm like, who's thinking this chick is hot? Who? You know, I just, she doesn't fucking weigh anything. It's just ugh, Jesus. What are the guys into these days? You know, I know I'm older and I'm just like, just kind of like giving up. You know? <laughs> mm-hmm. I just like I just can't get into this shit, man. Fuck Some sake. of the women on the original Star Trek were pretty hot. I was thinking about that the other day because it was just on. Oh, yeah, yeah. I mean, completely. And, you know, understandably. I mean, the, half the time they weren't even they weren't wearing very many clothes either. Like, this is my daughter, and it's a place that music and you know. Ooh. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, she's like wearing that '60s go-go fucking skirt yeah, and the knee boots. Her smiling at her, you know, with the light on. I'm like, hi. Look, it's, it's so ridiculous. I'm but, the captain of a starship. It's, oh. Yeah, this shows totally sexist, but in a good way. Um, yeah, yeah. Well, I remember what was it Khan? He had that redhead. Yeah, right. he was in love with, and I just remember she came out going, "Jesus fucking <laughs> right. ridiculous." <laughs> I, would, I mean, yeah. I must have just kept pausing the show like somebody else wants to bang her, you know, because, I mean, you know. That's what, yeah, that's when you look them up today. You're, like, Googling them. You're like, is she still, oh, yeah. is she still out at 70? Because, you know. Like... You know, yeah. I mean, you show kids today, though. They're like, that's like a fat grandmother. You're like, <laughs> <laughs> you don't know. You don't know what's good. Now, look at this one. It's some skeleton. Yeah, that's hilarious. You know, here, look at the chick. Some hot chick. Some some skeleton in her dress. Like, don't you think she's cute? Like, no. <laughs> just fucking gross. No way, but. Other than that, uh, that was pretty much my day. I'm going to get off this real quick because i got to go pee. The fucking ice tea's going right through me. Cool, cool. So I'll be right back. All right. Can I pee? Don, how was your week? Oh, it was all right. 
Nothing major to. You got to watch some wrestling. I got to watch some wrestling, and there was a pay per view, and I've been doing tumbling and tumbleweed with a headset now. Have you noticed that? Have you listened? I have been listening. Um, it doesn't sound that much different, but it, you know, that you turn down the volume on those sound effects. So that was good. Well, that just I think the I think the the headset turns me up. Oh, so you don't have to turn your thing up. You know what? Blah blah blah. Um, I'm trying to think here. Yeah. Nothing. I mean, oh my God! Talk about living in a cycle, living in a circle. Just the same. PlayStation Four. Been playing any battle Battlefront? No. Star Wars. No, no I, I got bored with that pretty quick, and then uh, I've still never even played it. I think I installed it though. Yeah. I think I did. I haven't. I don't really go on that much. I mean, I, I I'm on now. Uh, <laughs> I'm on now because I'm really paying attention to you guys, and. Uh, yeah, no, I haven't really, I haven't even really been playing anything lately because I keep falling asleep. <laughs> that, that might be a problem. Is that like a, is that well, no, it's like a, Are you just passing uh, out where you're yeah, at? I come home, I come home and I'm, it's late night and I sit and it's like, I, I, I don't have a chair or nothing. So I have to sit on the bed. So it's like you either, you either got to sit up on the bed, like on the side of the bed, but then your back starts hurting. So you got to lay down or you just lay down all together. And, and like, I was play- yeah, because I was I was playing wrestling the other day and I started a match and I, I hit the I remember hitting the button to start the match. And then, you know, like stuff has to load up and stuff. And um, I don't know. I woke up an hour later. I lost. And uh, it was just not, you know, it wasn't. A, I was just like, you know what? This sucks. I'm going to sleep. So that's all I've been doing. I've been I mean, this past week. My mom's had bronchitis. Oh, geez. So yeah, so I've been dealing with that, you know, going back and forth to hospitals. And are you going to catch it now? Uh, probably not. <laughs> Most diseases are afraid of me. You are just sterilized yourself over these years. So yeah, most of the diseases are like, why waste our time? He doesn't care. They can't you know? find anything to infect. They're like, it's just, it's just empty in here. <laughs> yeah, there's nothing inside here. <laughs> it's there's all dark. To spread to. So dark in here, but yeah, I've been dealing with that. You know, getting up in the morning, taking because because the one day it was like take her to the hospital, so I took her to the hospital, and then she stayed there for a couple of days. Wow! But then, but then she came out on Thursday, and then Friday morning they woke me up and said take her back. Really? So wow. Take her back. And so then there's running around looking for nebulizers and medicines and try to pick up Sophie and is yeah. She, is she doing all right now? Or? Yeah, she's all right. We got this nebulizer with the medicine and stuff, so she breathes that in for a while. And, She's good to go. Nebulizer? Mm-hmm. It's like an agonizer. But... Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's a, it's a wrestling move. Uh, but, yeah, so she, she's doing better. She's and my dad. He's still around. He's still here. Well, that's good. Just complaining. <laughs> complaining about everything. So, I've been yeah. trying to cook more. That's my week. I've just been trying to, because I can't keep eating stuff out of boxes. It's going to kill me. That's what all I do. I, I can't do it, I, so I gotta cook. Right. Also, you know, George Michael died from a fatty liver, and I have a fatty liver. So, can't have that. Can't be dying. Can't be dying. Can't Plus, be I don't want to eat a bunch of medication either. It's just, there's always some side effect to whatever medication you're on. Just, you know, they add up after a while. You take a few, and then you got all kinds of problems and shit. It's just, it's no good. So I'm working on that. Not, not that it's easy, because there's those days I come home from work and I'm just like I'm gonna eat a pizza, right? Because I just I don't feel like I went to the dentist. Oh God! And I was getting my uh, I have I had an implant put in my you know into my jaw, so that I just have a post in my mouth. That's all done. So no. what they were gonna do is they're gonna take the tooth, and they were gonna put it on there you know the the crown and uh i already had been there where they do the mold so you bite into this like putty and right. then you know it makes the mold oh my god a bunch of old men and talking about our fucking physical problems so anyway yeah. i go there and uh i mean you can get these when you're young if you got teeth that fall out you know just get uh, out if of you're nowhere. a ufc fighter and you get punched in the face you know break a tooth i'm gonna have to be old to have this happen but anyway, it didn't fit. 
like it okay, wouldn't go sure. down all the way. So at first they were like, well, it, it, it apparently the guy who makes the tooth was like nearby the building. So he came over and he's like, yeah, it's pressing on this one molar. So they can do some grinding, you know, to, to reshape it. So they did that, and then they got it, but it wouldn't go down all the way. So they kept, like, grinding off a little bit here and there, which was working. Like, I was almost there, and then it cracked. Huh. So then they were like, well, it's good that this happened here. Uh, you know, we'll have to get you another one, blah, 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 you know. But then they couldn't get it off. So they were trying to, like, use this, like, weird, like, um, leverage tool thing to, like, pop it off, and that didn't work. So then they were like, well, I guess we're just going to have to cut it off. And my dentist was getting kind of pissed, because he's like, usually this just clicks right on. I'm like, I don't know. So um, they grind it off, they, you know, drilled it off or whatever, and then they're like, you can go and come back in a week. So Wednesday, I go back in, try this again. Um... And hopefully this time it just works. Just snaps on there. Yeah. I, I tell you what, though. If I ever get an implant again, it's going to have to be on a tooth where it's like actually like really necessary. Because this whole experience has been uh, like a circus. Like It's just an enormous amount of visits between the surgeon and the dentist that right. it's just, uh, you know, I could handle a gap in my, in my back teeth somewhere before before i would do this shit again it's just that's why i've got a that's why i got a missing tooth i just refuse to go through all that bullshit because as far as i was able to discern the dentist just was like well we're gonna put a lego in your head and it as soon as you said it might fall back out so you might have to put it back in i'm like well who pays for that? i was like well we're not doing it for free like yeah i'll get back to you on that right because um no <laughs> yeah so far this whole thing's cost me about four thousand dollars not all at once. Yeah, see, that's bullshit. I ain't, fuck it. I'll just go without the tooth. They're like, well, if you don't, you know, you might have some problems with your jaw. The teeth might start coming. Like, that's fine. I'll just, I'll deal with it myself. I'll just fix my own face. Totally fine with it. Yeah. Yeah. I'll be dead by then anyway. It depends on where it is. Like, this one's kind of close to the front, so I just get it in there. But, you know, and if I lost, like, a main, like, you know, one of my front teeth, I would do it. But... Oh well, no, yeah, then you have to, because otherwise we'd be fucking breaking your balls. But if it was in the back or something, you know, no way. I'd just put, like, a piece of wax in there or something. Be like, Big else. fucking fake vampire teeth. Yeah. <laughs> just got a Jolly Rancher shoved in there. Yeah. Got to replace it every, every hour. We're like, yeah. <laughs> All right, let's do a little bit of news. Uh, Monolith. I don't know what happened to Larry. Larry must not have set his clock forward. Um... Monolith Studio head Kevin Stevens said some interesting things about Xbox Project Scorpio when he when we spoke to him recently. This is Games Radar about the upcoming Middle Earth sequel, Shadow of War. The recently announced Shadow of War is one of the first games to confirm it'll be on Scorpio. Buying a digital copy from the Xbox or Windows Store will also get you a version for Scorpio when the console launches. Although technically everything on Xbox PC will run on the platform. When we spoke to Stevens about the upcoming console, he replied, We found nothing false about their claims about the hardware. As far as we can tell, it will be the most powerful console ever created when it launches. Unless somebody has an announcement I don't know about. I don't know why that would be surprising to anybody. Like, uh, yeah, they're coming out with it, but it's actually not as powerful as Xbox One. I mean, you know, or not as powerful as PlayStation 4. I mean, you would hope you know a few years that it's going to be at least more powerful than anything else when it comes to the overall xbox ecosystem stephens continues i can't speak for microsoft but from our point of view they seem very committed to you know if you buy an xbox one whether it's a one or an s or a scorpio you're going to buy a game and be able to play it on any of them that seems very consistent with our experience of working on those platforms yeah i guess that's cool I don't, I don't care too much about that though. Like, because I have the con, I I have the old console, and I always feel like when I'm running any game in like emulation mode on another console that it's like it's not right, even right. if it if it looks right and everything. I always feel like Something's I'm probably I'm pre yeah I'm probably dying in the game because it's not right. 
<laughs> I guess there's nobody in. I don't know. That's strange. I'm just paranoid. What do you plan on doing? Yeah. I have a feeling this is where the answer is. Nothing new there. Several Nintendo Switch owners <laughs> report <laughs> that their console screens are getting scratched up by the included dock. But Nintendo executives say they've yet to experience the issue itself. In an interview with Time, Nintendo of American president uh, Reggie Filami, whatever his name is, cast the doubts on scratched up Switch tablets, but asked customers to continue reaching out for support. This is why we're encouraging customers to reach out to us directly, Filami said when asked of the somewhat widespread problem where Switch consoles end up with scratches when pulled out of the dock. We have done, as you know, literally hundreds of events, starting with our activity back in January, and most recently the various tours that we continue to take the system out on. As soon as I heard of this report, I asked my teams, have we seen this in our own experience? And the candid answer has been, no. It sounds like <laughs> Nintendo staffers are lucky enough to own so-called perfect Switch units, which fans have defined as consoles that shipped without any of the hardware issues many are facing. Philomene emphasized that he and his team have yet to see a Switch get scratched up in all of their docking and undocking, an anecdotal report that opposes those of many users. Anyway, who cares? I'm sure whatever piece of plastic Nintendo is touching against your screen, you know, mm -hmm. you could figure it out on your own that that might scratch your screen. Right. You know, if I drag this across the screen, it might Maybe not punching up. your screen would help, and you would get a scratch. Yeah. <laughs> Steam Top 10. Number 10, Left 4 Dead 2. Number 9, number 8, number 6, and number 5 is Tom Clancy's Ghost Recon Wildlands. I don't make the list, folks. That's just how it is. Number 7, Black Wake. Number 4, Near a Auto... What is it? Automata. Ata How do I say that word? Auto asphyxiation. No, it's automata, but I don't think that's right. It's automata. 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 Number three. Counter Strike Global Offensive. Number two. Automata. One King of the Kill. Oh, and number one. Tom Clancy's Ghost Recon Wildlands. It's on the list five times. I don't even know how that's possible, um, but it is. Here's one for Brian. Mm. I was More playing our than seven million copies sold worldwide. The third installment of the acclaimed Warhammer Forty Thousand Dawn of War real time strategy series needs you to fight once again for the Imperium. Oh, that's right. I check that on Steam. The Sphere of Cain. Another Cain, Brian. A lost catastrophic weapon. It's K-H-A-I-N-E. It's K-H-A-I-N-E. It's the Eldar God of Murder and Death. And a lost catastrophic weapon has been returned to the light. Murder. Battle. Following this event, the greedy orc warlord Gorguts, the ambitious Eldar <laughs> seer Gorgut. Maka, and the mighty space marine commander Gabriel Angelos Angelos. Landed on the world to find it and reclaim the supremacy of the whole galaxy. Galaxy. A showdown of epic proportions raging. Three races contend for dominance, but only one can win. And don't kid yourselves, all the other races will show up in expansion packs. That's fine. In Warhammer 40,000 Dawn of War 3, you'll be called to manage both economic resources that will provide more power, useful unit upgrades, and the ability to unlock the powerful elite units and larger-than-ever armies. Very useful to defeat the mighty Super Walkers War Machines and lead tour faction to the victory. I think it's about your faction. Push your strategy skills to the limit, and no enemy faction will be safe from your unstoppable assaults. Victory or oblivion, the choice is yours, Brian. Welcome Kevin. back to the spectacular Warhammer 40,000 universe. You know you want that game. You should be playing it right now. I don't know that it's out yet, is it? I don't know, it's for sale. John Carmack is suing ZeniMax Media for $22.5 million, which he claims the company still owes him from its acquisition of id Software in 2009. Lawsuit, which was filed with the Texas court yesterday, is rooted in ZeniMax Media's $150 million acquisition of id Software four years before Carmack left the company to become 
uh, CTO of Oculus VR as the major shareholder. Carmack was due to receive $45.1 million, half of which he received in the form of Zenimax shares. However, the other half, $22.5 million, still hasn't been paid. Sticking point is the recent legal action between Zenimax and Oculus, which resulted in the former being awarded $500 million for copyright infringement and false designation. That money was paid by Oculus and its two founders, Palmer Lucky and Brendan Irieb, but Zenimax Media's case made a number of allegations against Carmack, including the theft of code and documents. According to the lawsuit, these claim violations of Mr. Carmack's employment agreement and Zenimax's alleged intellectual property rights were cited by Zenimax when it made it clear that the company would not voluntarily comply on a timely basis. However, the suit states that no claim for breach of contract was brought by Zenimax against Carmack as part of the Oculus case. Sour grapes is not an affirmative defense to breach of contract, it said. Zenimax has responded with a statement, Sour grapes. which it opens by saying that Carmack's complaint is completely without merit. The rest of the statement is published below. I'm not reading it. Okay, so that's it for the gaming news. Let's, uh, let's do a uh, little bit of Cleveland news. Cleveland man is accused of dragging a woman into his home and raping her after she tried to leave. Jesus. Adito Rosa, 43, is charged with first-degree rape. He was arrested Thursday and booked into the city jail. Hmm. The attack happened Tuesday on West 56th Street in the city's old Brooklyn neighborhood after the woman visited Rosa at his house. Rosa struck the woman several times in her face and body when she tried to leave the home. According to court documents, he dragged her back inside and then forced her to shower because she was covered in mud, records say. Rosa made the woman lie in bed and held her there for hours, records say. He raped the woman before allowing her to leave. The woman called police as soon as she left the home. Paramedics took her to a hospital for treatment. A warrant was issued the next day. Really? You waited a day to issue the warrant? It's kind of weird. Christ. Rosa has been charged and... Thir- you know, the guy might get away. Well, we got pro- procedures in place, ma'am. <laughs> yeah. We have to wait 24 hours before we're allowed to ra- uh, arrest the rapist in this case. Yeah, yeah, we got to hold off on that because we, ne- we might get it wrong. Yeah. Rosa has been charged Jesus Christ, what? in 13 felony cases in Cuyahoga County since 1994, according to court records. His convictions include weapons violations, domestic violence, Burglary, theft, breaking and entering, telephone harassment, drug offenses, and two protection order Telephone violations. harassment? That's what it says. Jesus Christ. People still do that, huh? Apparently he's going to go to jail again. For like the 17th time. Police have arrested a man who witnesses said grabbed and beat a woman and forced her into a car Saturday morning. The same guy? The car was found at East 35th Street and Alley Bay Avenue at 6.30 p.m. Cleveland Police Spokeswoman Sergeant Jennifer Sacacia said. The man and woman were subsequently located. The incident is believed to be a domestic violence situation and the victim is refusing to cooperate or prosecute. The man and woman appeared to be intoxicated when the man was arrested, Sacacia said. Witnesses saw the man grab and beat a woman and force her into a black Audi SUV four-door just after 10 a.m. The SUV was first seen in a parking lot, and the man grabbed the woman on the sidewalk. The matter continues to be investigated. You notice Larry Mack's not here this week, right? Yeah. I know why. Is that bad? <laughs> hmm. Strange things happen. Oh, Larry I see what you're saying. Possibly. Where's Cindy Mack? Uh, let's see. A woman was it's, injured it's Saturday basement. afternoon when a man assaulted her with a rifle at a Willoughby Hills business, police said. This woman's screaming. Goes, goes with the uh, background of, the, uh, of what I'm talking about. The assault happened about 2 p.m. at a business inside a shopping plaza in the 28,000 block of Chardon Road. Across the street from a larger plaza with Giant Eagle and Mark's grocery stores, Willoughby Hills police said in news release. The victim told responding officers that she was assaulted by a 37-year-old man with a rifle. The suspect was still inside the business, but he was driving around with a fucking rifle to speak with officers. A soft barricade situation ensued. Oh, Larry's here now because he must have heard my mentioning of Jennifer's occasion. 
Uh, Willoughby Hills <laughs> Police Sergeant Michael Girardi told Cleveland.com the suspect would answer a negotiator's call and either immediately hang up or stay on the line but not speak. The Western Lake County Emergency Response Team was sent to the business and one of the team's negotiators successfully reached the suspect by phone. The team's officers arrested the suspect a short time later. No one was injured in the barricade situation. The Greater okay. Cleveland Regional... I gotta wait for Larry's microphone to start working before I do this one. Diocese. Uh, I'm sure he'll, he'll want to comment. I will do this one. An armed carjacking suspect fired at least one shot at a Cleveland police officer during a car chase Friday night, police said. The incident began at about 7.15 p.m. when a man carjacked someone at gunpoint in the 3800 block of West 135th Street in the city's Jefferson neighborhood, according to police. Cleveland police officers spotted the car about 8.15 p.m. at East 92nd and Superior Avenue. The officers chased the car until it crashed into a parked car on East 115th Street and Carolina Avenue. Two suspects Jesus ran from the car and one Christ. fired a shot at the officers. No officers were injured, police said. Police said no arrests have been made. Which is not what happens on the TV show Cops. They always catch the guy. But in real life, they get away. Now, I've actually seen a cue where they got away, which I thought was weird. Really? Yeah. That's weird, man. I don't know, Larry's microphone's just not gonna work. You want me to try to turn it on for you, Larry? Yeah. Push the button. Oh. Oh no. Did I just blow things up? Yeah, I'm in car two with camera across. Oh. Shows camera off, though. There is no Larry Mac, only Zool. <laughs> there is no sanctuary. There is no sanctuary. Ooh. Okay. A Greater Cleveland Regional Transit Authority driver was injured early Sunday when shots were fired at the bus he was driving, police said. The shooting happened about 4 a.m. at West 44th Street and Lorraine Avenue in Cleveland's Ohio City neighborhood. Police spokeswoman Sergeant Jennifer Sakasha said. A vehicle stopped at the intersection, fired a gun at the RTA bus. The bus driver was not shot. But he was taken to Metro Health for treatment for minor injuries, possibly caused by broken glass striking him, Skasia said. The man, the suspected shooter, came to the Cleveland Police Second District later Sunday morning and turned himself in, Skasia said. Formal charges have not been filed. The shooting investigation continues. Just, That's why I was late. I turned myself in. He was uh, shot at a bus for no reason at 4 a.m. Like, yes. I hate buses. Yes. Yeah. I hate buses. buses. Suburbia. Style. That was great. Uh, right. We got a email. Ooh, I think we have. Oh, we have two emails. This email comes from Antonio, and he writes to Sad Larry at VideoGameNews.com. <laughs> Hello, Don and crew. Finally was able to catch up with all the shows since January. Is that going to be a new thing for Kevin? Just releasing shows in bulk. Anyways, will any of you besides Kevin be picking up a Nintendo Switch? Maybe Mobile Skyrim will appeal to Brian. Yeah, Mobile Skyrim does appeal to me, but it's like, I don't know. It's like I want to, I want to like it, but I don't know when to spend that kind of money. Did you get a tax return check? Doesn't matter. I gotta give most of that back to the government. <laughs> Larry, Don? No. I, I, I will not be getting one. Um, I'm, I'm not sure uh, if I'll ever own a TV again, so... Oh, God. I think, I think you'll get a TV at some point. <laughs> I think you just have to pull the trigger. Well, no, I... <laughs> I <laughs> I, I'm, I'm not sure that uh, the, you know, the cigarette lighter will run that thing when I'm living in a van down by the river. <laughs> uh, poor Larry. Um, uh, let me just do this other email, and then you can tell your tale of woe. <laughs> uh, 
this is from Eric, and he writes to uh, thank you for posting the shows at videogamenews.com. It's Kevin. The reason you're getting the candy ads is due to the movie reviews you're posting. The algorithm is associating movies and candy. With the frequency of your movie tags, I'm surprised they don't think you're bedridden and sending you ambulatory service ads, quite frankly. <laughs> well, thanks, Eric. It might, be, it might be true. Although right now, yeah, they're sending me this thing that does, it turns your vitamins into a drink or something. <laughs> And it completely doesn't sound like it's, anything it's, I want. Like you put all your vitamins in there and it's like a juicer? I don't know if it's that. Or you order the vitamins oh, from them horrible. and then, yeah, and then it's like it, it produces some sort of daily juice that you drink. <laughs> and mm. it does not look good. I mean, it just, yeah. It's all like that, that weird kind of moss green. <laughs> Where it's just like, you just smell, you're just like, oh, dude, this is the, sh uh, you know. I don't need a device to make me a, a vitamin juice. It's just not right. All right, anyway, that's that for there. So we'll uh, catch up with Larry. Larry, how was your couple of weeks? Wow. So, um, yeah, I was, I was totally asleep on the couch because I've been packing up and putting stuff in storage the last two days. So, um... So, so we uh, we discussed me buying a house and all that, and because this is Larry's life and it's how things work in Larry's life, um, I found a house and I made my offer and they finally you know we went we encountered a couple times and finally arrived at a price we both liked and we're like boom let's do this thing and like that day I got home from work and. Uh, had, had the note on my door letting me know that, you know... Get out. Basically. <laughs> um, at, the, at the end of this month, uh, my, my lease expires. And they're like, hey, we, we hope you've enjoyed your stay with us. Just so Get you out. know, we will be doing our annual rent increase. Check you the and fuck out. Um, we are more than happy to just automatically renew your lease for another year. If you don't want us to automatically renew your lease for another year, you need to let us know. And it's basically, I had three days. Now the problem is I needed to let them know by like last Tuesday or well, like Tuesday, two weeks ago, not this past Tuesday. Um, and I was going to be in Pittsburgh all week for work. So, um, Actually walking in and handing them a written letter was going to be somewhat difficult. Now, if I just, like, let it renew, then either I would be stuck here for a year while I'm about to buy a house. Or I could, I could get the special clause written into my lease where I'm allowed to break the lease if I'm purchasing a home. But then I have to give them basically two months notice. And it's an extra 75 bucks a month to get that clause in your lease. So I was like, well, you know, I was like going back and forth because you know, I was like, I don't want to like give them my notice and then have like the inspection come back on the house. There's a problem, but you know, and I didn't want like my lease to expire before the house closed, even if everything went right. But I was like, you know what? I'm, I'm not paying that kind of money. You know, there was already a previous offer that fell apart because of uh, financing on the house. So I know what that inspection found. I was like, okay, you know what? I'm going to, I'm going to pull, I'm going to go ahead and pull the trigger. We're going to do this. I had my uh, friend Susie. I basically emailed her a letter from Pittsburgh and said, could you stop by the office at my apartment and drop this off? No problem. Boom. I'm good. I'm golden. I, Managed to get a hold of all the stuff I needed to send the loan guy. I'm going to be a homeowner literally the day after she dropped that fucking letter off. I uh, get a call letting me know that the underwriters rejected my deal. Because when they, when they pre-approved me for the loan, they forgot to include my child support. <laughs> Despite the fact that it was, it's written all over the three months of pay stubs I sent them that I'm paying child support. How much more do you got to pay in child support, bro? Uh, till next August. Oh, that's not bad. Yeah. It's a um, fortune, man. Exactly. Oh, dude. You have no idea. Yeah, I know, right? right. Uh, well, I guess you do. Um, yeah. Trust me, yeah. I didn't expect to get paid money back, though, for overpaying. That was 
Yeah, that's that, that's yeah, that's I, that's a nice. You just know it's a joke. You're like this. There's no way. Yeah, you know? you know, for some stupid reason, when Kendall turned 18, I got money back instead yeah. of them just applying it to what I still owe for Lizzie. Yeah, I was, I was, I was like, well, I don't care. I'm cashing this check. Yeah, um, congratulations for being a good dad. You know, yeah. taking care of your kid. So, uh, so at the end of the month, I will be homeless. Um, so I got that going for me. Uh, now, now they did say. Like well, actually no, no. We can we can still salvage this deal. All I need you to do is, can you bring another eight thousand dollars to the closing? And I was like, well, Good if I him. could, br- I was like, if I could bring another eight thousand to the closing, I probably would have that included that eight thousand in my original down payment and signed up for a smaller mortgage. I'm just saying. Um, so he's like, okay, okay, well, no problem. The other thing we could do is, could you get a cosigner? I was like, nobody is going to co-sign <laughs> for a fucking house. Like, if, if, oh, yeah, if sure. I, like, like if I went to my like parents or even some of my friends and said, "Hey, I'm having a hard time getting financing for this car," they might hook me up because you know it's car. But no one's going to be like, "Hey, Larry, you know what? I'm totally willing to gamble on you <laughs> keeping up with a one hundred and sixty-five thousand yeah. dollar debt." That's sort of your I'm, track record. I think it's a good investment. Yeah. Like, what's what, what's the worst thing that could go Not that you're bad. You're just, you know, it's just fucking shit's expensive. And all of a sudden, it'll be that moment. Like, something fucked up is going to knock on your door. So, I'm like, no, I, I can't get a cosigner. So, that deal fell apart. Um, and then, I was like, okay, so, it's just the child support. I now have to look for houses again. I was like... What would the underwriters approve? I'll use that as my pre-approval number, and I'll just like you know downgrade the houses I'm looking at. Apparently, this incredible child support that I'm paying that they, they didn't count on. He's like, well, we can't still pre-approve you for this, but it's thirty thousand dollars less. I'm like, how does that work? I don't. It's not like I pay thirty thousand dollars a year in child support. But anyway, so I'm pre-approved for that much, but. Mm-hmm. Um. Yeah, I got two and a, well, not quite three weeks, and I'll be homeless. So I got so that's nice. Um, yeah, I got that. I got that going for me. Um, what else? What else? Is this what else? sobbing going on behind Larry's door? <laughs> right. As he folds and puts things away in brown Pretty boxes. Much. Yeah, yeah. I'm I'm packing up like all my life's possessions with like the Hulk music playing in the background. <laughs> So yeah, I uh, got myself a storage unit, and I've been last two days going back and forth to that, back and forth to the dumpster, and like I've I've pretty much been told by everybody I know that hey, I, I ain't moving furniture for you, so I've been trying to drag couches by myself. Um, oh my god, yeah. So it's Friday. You know, lots of young, nimble. 30 somethings, just have them come over and live that shit for you later. Except they're all girls. They they could rope some of their manly men friends in to help they you. Put them all together in one spot. I mean. Yeah. There's some guys that would like, like 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 you know, Lord knows they're they're all far more fit and in better shape than me and could absolutely do it. But I'm not gonna be the guy who has to like sit in my recliner while two girls move my couch for me. I'll just leave it here and burn the fucking joint down. Not only should you do that, but you should be filming it on Facebook at the same time <laughs> because that would be gold. Have, have like have two girls moving the couch and a third one standing next to me with like a big like palm leaf fanning me. Yeah, with while I pe- eat holding a holding a pizza <laughs> with the other hand. Yeah. You're just t- telling them to be very careful as they. Yeah, I'll, I'll be like, it. hey, hey, don't don't scratch the glass on that curio cabinet, you two. Yeah. Don't be careful. That's funny. So Larry's going to be in North Royalton homeless. Yeah. Um, Living in a van down by the river. <laughs> okay. Oh, oh yeah. So then oh this is this is even better. Uh so then I was like I I wanted to check with a different owner or lender about a pre-approval because I was like, screw you guys. I can't believe you just fucked me like this. Um, 
while that was all going on, I bought out the lease on my car. So they pulled my credit and they're like, well, this is showing you have two car payments. I'm like, well, no, one car payment replaced the other. Like, I had a lease and now I have an auto loan in lieu of the lease. I'm not doing both. Like, no, nah, they're both showing up on your credit report. So I had, <laughs> <laughs> so according to this, you're, you're, you're paying way too much money a month. I was like, well, yeah, I'm paying way too much a month if right now I went out and got a second car for some reason. <laughs> but I didn't. I bought out the lease on the one I had. Well, okay, so well, we can fix that. And so if any of you are unsure on the status of, like, without getting into hard pulls and soft pulls on your credit, but there's all those people who will tell you that if you check your credit too much, you actually ding your credit. Sure. Well, I, of course, went through the pre-approval once, a few months back, with multiple lenders. I bought out the lease on my car, and when they, did, when they financed it, they shopped for the best rate for me. Yeah. And now I'm doing the pre-approval process again. Just checking my credit knocked like 30 points off my credit score. Because <laughs> I got the printout. I'm like, what the fuck is this? My credit's what? So, homeless for a while then. Yeah. Or buying a house in East Cleveland. <laughs> <laughs> Where, uh, Jennifer, Jennifer's Acacia. <laughs> yeah. Will, uh, Do a report on you shortly. Yeah. 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 So, so at least, at least, at least, you know, the listeners will be able to keep up with what's going on in my life when, <laughs> when I'm this week's police blotter. Well, for more of that, and this day in the uh, Larry Mac universe. Uh, listen to uh, video game news radio every week on Sundays at 8 o'clock, and we'll see if he survives. Uh, anyway, we'll be back next week with more uh, videogamenews.com. Right into the show, whatever you want, at videogamenews.com. It all comes to me, and we'll read it on the air. Uh, that's it. Have a good one. Grease your peace. Peace.